we're going to be starting the semester with our first major drawing of a personal memory still life. Uh, before I jump into the specifics of this artwork, I want to make sure that I identify and communicate the four major learning targets that we're going to be addressing, not only with this drawing, but all throughout the semester. These are the four learning targets you see listed here. As you can already tell, we've already started attacking composition as well as technical skill. With this specific artwork, we're going to be um, introducing observational skills and developing those, as well as content development and exploration. It is your responsibility to make yourself aware of these targets as well as read through them. As I go throughout the semester, you, we're going to touch on these all the time, and this is what you're going to see on the rubric when I'm assessing your artwork. As well as when we talk about these during uh, mid-process critiques, um, we're going to address these targets. So, first things first. What is a still life? That's a term that we're going to be uh, learning today and making sure that we understand what that is. So, what is a still life? First of all, a still life is going to be, as you can read here, it is a collection of objects that are used by artists that are going that they use to advance their skills. So they practice with these things. Something that needs to be stressed is that these are real, live objects. Okay, They're not objects taken from a picture. It isn't things from our imagination. It is actually objects sitting in front of us that we look at. And they're typically arranged in an interesting fashion so as to challenge us, but also to help convey and further our ideas. Objects are arranged and not moved for the duration of the study. So hence, still. Okay? They sit still. So that way we can constantly check on our proportions. We can constantly check on our use of space, our details, our lighting. All those things are important to advance our skills as well as in the conveyance of our ideas. Moving on. You can see that still lifes are something that were used throughout history for artists to you know, advance their skills as well as to communicate um, ideas and as, as well as to make their places of uh, work and or homes a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So here you can see that there's three different still lifes from ver three very different times and um, periods in our history. With the lower left hand corner down here we are introduced to a new term which is vanitas. You see this a lot with our um, still life artists where they start to basically um, use still lifes to convey some kind of idea, specifically religious, uh, some sort of religious message. And they're using a lot of imagery that is symbolic of mortality as well as the meaning, meaninglessness of worldly possessions and pleasures. So when you see that term, know that it's typically the uh, religious message uh, with some kind of context of life and death. You can see here how art, you know, how even artists that we know that we don't typically associate with still lives did actually, in fact, practice and use still lives for their work, such as Vincent van Gogh. Uh, Wayne Thiebaud, he used still lifes a lot for his artworks. Uh, Paul Cezanne used them as studies. And Roy Lichtenstein, who is more known for his artwork uh, depicting, you know, comic, kind of like comic uh, cells, <clears throat> he also as well explored with still lifes, or experimented with still lifes, excuse me. So what makes still lifes interesting? What makes an, a still life more than just a study? That's a really good question that we're going to investigate that because you are going to be building a still life that is not just meant for practicing your skills, but rather to convey a message, something that you want to say through these collection of objects. So what makes a still life interesting? Why don't you take a couple seconds and really think about that. Okay. Something that makes still lifes interesting are going to be unique points of views and perspectives. So when you look at an artwork like this, what makes these unique? What is interesting about these views? Are we being presented with objects in the way we typically see them, or are we being forced to look at them in a different way? If so, in which way? Lighting is another aspect that artists use to make their still lives more interesting. So when looking at these artworks by Yale Factor, <clears throat> I want you to ask yourself, what effect is the lighting having on these objects? What is our attention being drawn to? How is the artist moving our eye through? moving our eyes throughout the composition from one object to the next. And more importantly, how does lighting play a part with that? Textures and details are another thing that uh, artists use. So for example, when you look at these objects, what makes these interesting? What about these artworks? What about these drawings are, is really drawing your attention? What, when you look at them, 
instead of just seeing these candies and these toys, what about these candies and toys is really drawing your attention and making you go, wow, that's really good? Well, odds are it's going to be what the artist used in terms of their details, how detailed they are, as well as the textures they are creating, making you really believe what it is that we're seeing. Composition. As you know, at this point, composition is the way in which we arrange objects on a picture plate. So when we look at these artworks, what is the artist doing to make it more interesting? How are they using space? How are they organizing their objects in a way that's going to draw us in? That's something I want you to be asking yourself as you're going to be designing your, your still life. Now here, another question is, what compositional arrangements can you identify? I want you to take like a second or two and see what you see. Okay, remember, we have four options. So with the one on the left, did you identify the L shape? Where the L is in here. Okay. One could argue that there's also a strong diagonal in here, but really you need to make sure that you're paying attention to the negative space that's in here. What about the one on the right by Paul Cezanne? Some would argue that you're actually seeing more of a strong diagonal in here, but you could also see that there is a golden triangle occurring with the use of space. Another tool that's, that artists use to make their still lifes interesting is extreme realism. There's a term for this known as, tr um, which is trompe l'oeil. Trompe l'oeil is, is a French term that means to fool the eye and is typically associated with extreme realism. So in many instances, when you are looking at artwork, looking at still lifes that have this feeling that you could go in and pick up the objects right off the canvas, right off the paper, the artist is using extreme realism, specifically trompe l'oeil. They are fooling your eye to make you believe that something is there that really isn't. So that's something that artists use to convey um, their meaning as well as making still lifes interesting. With this specific one here, um, talking about the composition, I want you to notice that this artist here as well used a strong diagonal in their compositional arrangement. Another tool that artists use to make their still lifes interesting is symbolism. Symbolism is obviously using common objects to represent abstract ideas and or qualities. So when looking at this artwork by Audrey Flack, ask yourself the relationship between these objects. What is going on? What story is she using? What, why would she be using crayons? Why would she be using paints in another? Take a look at the water in the lower right hand um, draw, oh, excuse me, painting. Why is it clear? What happened? There are narratives that are occurring. Little details that, that further advance the idea uh, behind this, these two specific artworks. We also have common or not so common objects and symbols. Here, looking at this artwork by Yale Factor, ask yourself, what is the relationship between these sets of objects? What might the artist be telling us? Where are they putting us? These objects are all visual cues and visual clues to a further, you know, to advance a story, to give us some kind of insight into what they're doing and why they're doing it. So it isn't just a, a uh, arbitrary collection of objects that just seem to go together. No, he consciously made decisions about the objects he is using and arranged them in a very specific way to draw our attention but also advance his idea. I want you to ask yourself as you look at this artwork, what might he be saying? 